Hi Athenas and Xenas, welcome back to the Plus Side of Life. My name's Amanda. Now dressing for cold weather doesn't have to be that hard. I just want you guys to remember a simple anagram. Bliss, base layers, insulation, soft shell. So up first is the base layer. This is what's gonna be sitting next to your skin. So it's important that it wicks away the moisture as you're sweating. And for that reason, I highly recommend staying away from cotton. There are two types of base layers that you'll typically find out there. One is a synthetic and one is a merino wool. Both work excellent, but there are different properties for each one to have its own benefits. You'll notice as you're shopping for these as well that you'll find a lightweight and midweight for synthetic or it'll say 150 or 250 for wool. That simply means that for colder temperatures you can wear the midweight which is a thicker fabric for that colder weather. Pro tip, merino wool is naturally antimicrobial which makes it excellent to wear for multiple days at a time. So if you're hiking a long section of the AT it's probably best to wear a merino wool base layer. Whereas if you're going skiing and you're going to be staying in a hotel and you have the chance to change more often, then a synthetic would probably be a good option for that. Insulation is the most important way to stay warm and also has the most options. Typically you'll find that there is fleece and a puffy. Now for fleece, it's pretty easy to find. It's really cheap as well as a form of insulation. And generally speaking, the thicker it is, the warmer it is. Now when it comes to puffies, there's a lot more in depth to go. To begin with, there's different types of fill. You'll usually find that it's either a synthetic or a down. When it says down, they're talking about a goose down. And if you are concerned about the humane treatment of the animal in order to make that jacket, make sure it has a blue sign. And that little logo will let you know that it was humanely treated in the service of making that product. Or if you prefer, you can just do a synthetic and you don't have to worry about it at all. Now you'll notice when you're looking at the tag for the down jackets, you'll see that it'll have like a 650 or 800. Most people get that confused and think that the higher the number is, the warmer the coat is. And that's not actually the case. What that number is indicating to you is how good quality the down itself is. So think of it as similar to like the thread count of your sheets. The higher the number, the better quality the sheets are. Same thing goes with the down. It, generally, it just means that it's more compressible to pack into your backpack as you're hiking. If you're really concerned about making sure that the jacket is warmer, look at the individual billows. The more 3D it is between the stitching and the more round it is, the more it's going to be warmer because it's going to be able to hold those pockets of air next to your body that's going to keep you warm. Pro tip. Synthetic bounces back when it gets wet a lot easier than down does. When those feathers get wet, they clump together and stay together, and that makes it where you are gonna stay colder. You need the loft to be bouncy and fluffy so those pockets of air can help be against your body to keep you warm. So for that reason, if you're gonna be somewhere wet, I recommend a synthetic over a down. The last layer in our Bliss Anagram is soft shell. This is gonna be the outermost layer that's gonna protect you against wind, water, and snow. There's different types of ways that your jacket can be waterproofed. The most common is a DWR, or durable water repellent finish, or a Gore-Tex finish. Now, with a DWR, that basically means that it's got a finished coat on it, sprayed or applied on the outer layer of the fabric. Compared to a Gore-Tex fabric, where the waterproofing is built into the membranes of the fabric as it was sewn together. So for that reason, Gore-Tex is much better when it comes to breathability and temperature control compared to that of a DWR finish. You'll typically find a plastic lined jacket. Those are a lot cheaper and they're excellent for quick spouts of rain when you're going, for example, from the house to the car, from the car to work. But if you're wearing those for a longer period of time, it'll trap in your body heat. Oftentimes people complain and say that they're not waterproof when in fact what's happening is that they're sweating and their sweat's not escaping through the jacket. And so what they feel is wet is actually their sweat, not rain. 
Gore-Tex, on the other hand, allows your body moisture to wick away from your body while also keeping the water from the outside away from your body. So while they are much better, they're also gonna cost more as well. But think of it as an investment piece that's gonna last you. And my last pro tip for this video is to make sure that you get a size bigger than you normally would for your rain jacket. It's gonna fit over all of the layers, so you'll typically find that you size up unless you wanna get two different jackets, a fitted one for the summer and a bigger one to go over all the layers in the winter. In the end, the layers that you choose are gonna be subject to you, your conditions, what activity you're doing. You may find that if you're hot natured, you don't need as many layers as your friend that's cold natured. It's all relative and there's not an exact science to layering. You may even find that you change layers throughout the day as you get hot or as the temperature changes from morning to midday. With that said, I hope you guys learned something new. I hope you got a little better understanding. of. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, enjoy, encourage, and explore.